Uh, I need to get your take on them. The mm. a few days ago, yes. the, uh, the NLC president, Mr. Joe, Joe Ajero, was mm. um, arrested at the airport on his way to the UK to yes. attend the program by the DSS. And um, also, the office of Serap um, was, was uh, invaded. invaded by the DSS. Mm. So, what, what, and and looking at the the what um, Ajero was arrested for, mm. something that had to do with sponsorship of mm. terrorism, sponsoring terrorists, and all that. What's your take well, on this? What do you think? The, what do you think the government is up to by accusing a man that ha was there, mm. that fought? Is, is their interest of the Labour Congress is for the for the general for the Nigerian mm. workers, you know? So what is the what, how what is the relationship between him fighting for a a, a, a living wage for the Nigerian workers? What mm. what is the relationship with that with ter terrorism and sponsorship of terrorism? What? I believe there are better ways to handle this. And the way and manner to which he was embarrassed at the airport and you arrested. You shouldn't carry out any function just to intimidate people. I consider it as a behavioral violation. Hello there, everyone. You're welcome to the conversation. My name is Elizabeth Samsedi. How are you guys doing? I hope um, the forest situation has died down a little bit all over the country because um, I know that um, everyone has been having it really very tough. The conversation is a program we bring to you live from Kaftan TV, Kaftan Television, here in the FCT, here in Abuja. It's a program we delve into conversations that has um, being on your front burner in the course of the week, both nationally and internationally. We bring them back here, um, some a guests on the show. We discuss, we trash them and how they have been affecting us as individuals in our society. And uh, we try to find a, a possible lasting solution to these challenges um, that we have. Today uh, on the show, we shall be looking at the world, a world that is very common now in the country called the palliatives. Honestly, um, it's um, it's amazing how the word palliative has become very, very common, a very common word around the country because um, people are in pain, people are hungry, people are suffering, uh, there's food insecurity, people can hardly make, you know, meet their daily bread, families can, parents can hardly feed their children, alright, so it's so bad that um, the governments um, have decided to find a way to like um, bring succumb to the people by uh, bringing palliatives to them, bringing foodstuffs and other means of livelihood for them to survive. But the question is, for how long are these um, palliatives going to continue? And how many people are actually getting them? We hear all the time palliatives being sent to states, the social states, that states, this states this uh, degree of people this level of people but and uh, yet again a lot of people complain that <coughs> they are yet to have received these violations so it's um the questions keep coming on and on and on who is getting these violations who has received these violations all right so this is um are the areas that we are going to dive into today and the main question is how did we get here? I have um, a guest with me at the studio that we're going to have to dissect all of these um, issues um, together today. His name is Dr. James Com Como Lafe. Lafe. Yes, Dr. James Como Lafe is a forensic behavior therapist from Saba Resources here in the FCT. You are welcome, Dr. James. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes. Good to be on this platform today. Yeah, yes, I'm glad. We are glad to for have this you. very pivotal conversation session. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Sir. So yes, we are talking palliatives, the cons mm. and the pros. So when you hear that word palliatives, as far like I said, it's all over the country. That's mm. what we hear every now and then. Every state is expecting the government, the federal government, to, to you know, to, for them to receive their own share of the federal palliatives that is being shared. What comes to your mind when you hear that word palliative? Well, palliatives. Unfortunately and invariably has come to be a normal day-to-day -day word in our nation. 
today just because of bad economy, a system of governance that has not really cascaded to looking at who we are, what we have, for what we can do or become. Anything palliative means, number one, it is not permanent. Mm. Two, it means it's a quick fix. Three, it means it is just cosmetic mm. surface. Mm. And more importantly, Elizabeth, palliatives lacks the capacity for the bigger picture reality. Okay. We so live in a society where mm. we need to understand our social ethnic diversity, mm. cultural diversity, and to understand our basic fulcrum so that that invariably will impact on what policy we roll out for the citizens. And I like to say palliatives are good in the very short run. Mm to meet the immediate need, yes. the emergencies. Yes. But when it is becoming a repetitive tendency and a behavior, it takes people off course. Yes, so... Um, the tail begins to wag the dog. Right. <laughs> the dog. Most of um, the palliatives, which yes. is food stuff that is even being shared, shared. Uh, rice, and um, we learned that most of even this rice are not farmed in nigeria most of them are even imported into the country this is nigeria this is the same nigeria where we were so strong in the areas of ag agriculture we were when it come to palms and um, it is on record that in malaysia it was nigeria that um, gave them the palms that they have mm. that you know uh, right now as at today and um this is the same Nigeria that when we talked about cocoa, we were very good in exportation. When in the seventies, exactly. In the sixties, yes. And we have mm. we have vast landscape, mm. land to farm, and um, blessed in agriculture. How do we get to the level of the fact that Nigerians are hungry? Nigerians as as big as the landscape we have. Mm. Nigerians cannot farm what they eat. How do we get to this level? The palliatives of today, Elizabeth, are evident because of the permanent solutions we refuse to see and embrace in the past. Most of the palliatives. And you see, no matter how you do love palliatives, whether homegrown or imported, it won't last forever. Mm. And then to, to be importing rice, or some other food staple mm, at zero uh, tax waiver and all of that and uh, distributing across the geopolitical zones and every state will not do the work in fact i call it double tragedy dual sabotage the foreign earnings that are supposed to come in by growing the local production we will miss it. And then the foreign uh, currencies we have, our domestic reserve, if we ever have one that is buoyant enough, is going to suffer depletion just to create a temporary solution to the issue yeah. on ground. Okay, so there is nothing bad about providing a temporary mm. a, a solution, but we are saying can we look at the nation holistically to see where to devolve energies, competencies, and capacities to go into production? Mm. We need to go back to the farm. Yeah, talking about Nigeria, going back to the farm. Yes. Talking about going back to the farm, one of the reasons of the food insecurity we're experiencing in the country is as a result of um, these farmer headers clashes and. Mm. Um, of course, this banditry and insecurity in the land. Let us delve a little bit into that, the food insecurity, hunger, poverty. Food security is critical. And food insecurity. 
there is a nexus between the general societal insecurity and food security because farmers will have to go to farm mm. to do farming although in some mechanized area and some other uh, special class of farming you could do within your courtyard if you have a large expanse of land around your compound uh, but i wonder whether that could feed the nation mm -hmm. after all <laughs> the first lady the president's <laughs> wife this, uh, this is, uh, uh, a little bit is encouraging everyone because she has a garden in behind his her nuclear her house, family and she's encouraging everyone to have a garden yeah, at home that will not still solve the problem absolutely we, find we need beyond that yeah we need to be able to help appreciate who our citizens are any man who has not found self-actualization no matter what you give him hmm, for salary for palliatives and all of that they are actually palliatives until a man finds no, no, that's an self they are not permanent yeah just temporary and lives his own life the way he wants it mm. and catch his own fund and generate fund through his own fund we are no we are nowhere yet so very pivotal nigeria is a monocultural economy till today it's not about talking to ict and all of that well thank god some of our youths are coming up when it comes to ict digital uh, space and all of that and we are actually trailing the line there should be more emphasis on what matters mm. locally nationally geopolitically and internationally can we quickly take we a should look not be behind at um let's look at uh, what's the relationship between po um, uh, hunger and poverty direct <laughs> a hungry man is an angry man so, it's said. so when you mix hunger to anger poverty is at the background and the first poverty is not absence of money mm. but it is the presence of ignorance that hinders people from finding out who they are and unleashing their potentials into productive ventures from where they will do value creation and earn their own money even if you are a government worker there are potentials and talents and graces within you for which you can package yourself to come out in your better version so, to create yeah. values solve problems find out what is happening but where you are completely bereft of such opportunities mm. and you are just a one-way traffic go to work carry the fire treat files play a little and come back home and it's a vicious circle and there's no initiative no innovative thinking no platform to do it the way it it, it sorts you out no no way to be creative and all of that okay, so what so do we have the, um, we have the same thing yeah uh, the same way lately, looking for different results yeah a couple of months back about two months ago mm. a new minimum wage was um, agreed upon mm. and um up to as we speak um it's yet to be implemented people are yet mm. to begin to start to receive um, the mi new minimum wage what's mm. your take on that aspect to considering the fact that um before for increment a lot of increments i have um, occurred ever since the uh, electricity bills keep coming the increase of uh, power fuel food stuff commodities and all that and yet even the seventy thousand that um everybody was clamoring that it's not enough even has not even is yet to be to to, to commence payment what is your take on this lizzie can i surprise you even if you make minimum wage a million naira <laughs> you know what the issue is not the nominal income but the real gdp what can that money buy mm that's the first thing and then to what you are going to buy is it available if it is available where is it being produced from in as much as we will not encourage the local industry to thrive and rise 
how do we get the minimum wage paid? How do we generate it? Do we have domestic uh, products that we export to be able to earn foreign foreign currencies? What's our reserve? Is it from borrowing? And you see, when we keep borrowing and borrowing for consumption, you know what? We are only postponing the evil days Absolutely. and accumulating debts right. for our unborn children to come and inherit. And that is behavioral violation because a good father will leave inheritance for his children, not debt. So, there is nothing bad <clears throat> on the surface. It's still a palliative we're talking about, even the mi new minimum wage. When we're doing that, we should also look at short-term, intermediate, and long-term projects mm -hmm. that we can engage in. Yeah, definitely. Not just Those create a solutions. big lacuna yeah. and you just strike at citizens. And you, Lizzie, you should know that any policy initiative now that to roll out the first impact on a negative note is the common citizens mm. who doesn't know what uh, economic analysis is mm. apart from going to the market to buy that mudu of gari beans sugar and to find out that what i bought for 10 naira is now yeah. 20 naira yeah and he doesn't know <laughs> why he can't explain. That's, that's absolutely. Yeah. And they say it's government too, it's government too. So, government is actually supposed to just create an enabling environment for the society to thrive. The poor, the middleman, the rich, everybody must be I, able to find their various levels yes. and become their best absolutely. version. Absolutely. Okay, so. Um, even when you take a look at all of this, um, let, let's even say there are as much as bags of rice, bags mm. of beans and mm. all that, which I, 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 don't, it's, I don't think is in all cases that they share up to, you know, up to a full bag. I hear about 10 kgs and 15, 20 kgs and all that. But even if it's a full bag, let's say a family of four. How long does it last? How long? That's my question. If, if, Lizzie, if I give you 10 bags now only, how long is it going to finish? If yeah, your it's diet going to be only about fed. rice, right. are you a rice, <laughs> just mm. a rice person? Mm. So what we call palliatives are not actually palliatives. And even when the rice is given, the, the, you need condiments to be able to make it prepared. <laughs> For which you have that. to still buy them. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So I, I, I used to be of the opinion that for as far as civil servants are concerned why mm. can't um they allow civil servants since most especially during the period when that um the argument why labor and the organized labor and government were going back and forth on the you know coming to an understanding about um the living wage for the nigeria worker mm. i was of the opinion that why can't it just be uh, they allow the worker to work like hourly okay they they go to at the, the, the office, they work, um, do what they ought to do. So if, if it takes them four hours, that. five, six hours, then mm. they allow them go take out something else to do, like up to let them, let, let, like they do overseas, let them be able to like run. Uh, you you are talking of overseas, the, the there, there is of, an enabling environment overseas. Some of those technology and ideas and innovation we, we import, the question we need to ask ourselves is this. Have we created a framework mm. that can power such initiatives? Uh, yeah. Are the jobs available? Are the mm. jobs available? Yeah. Those are all the things we should look at. And then there are some offices who will say, okay, come three times a week. That's good, but it still does not solve it. Yeah, so when they come three times a week, the other two days of the week, what do they do? What do they do? They are strapped. Except for those that <clears throat> have skills. The, and the, once the, they are at home that, without ski, without anything to fall back, they eat more. <laughs> True. Just like when your children are on strike. Mm. You see, you spend more mm. than when they are in school. Because that's the time they will consume all your <laughs> energy. Yeah. They consume their, uh, power. They consume food. They sleep more. The utilities are engaged more. So we need to go back to the basis, to our geopolitical zones. 
what is obtained in the south south how do we encourage it hyper not east hyper not west hyper southwest and every other place we do bad but and begin that done, to devolve resources towards encouraging the people yeah getting that done the, the that basis think, um, and the, then, the constitution has to be technology about oh, we've got, i didn't know human beings and that's why there's agitation for a, a national confab for which we've had over and over and I was think, not used and uh, they are not often ad adhered to or used and all kinds of uh, conferences and all that and a lot of people are even against um, we looking at the constitution to see a way where it can be am amended or rewritten so that all of these um, challenges because most of the challenges that nigeria has according to so, a lot of people is from the constitution so our framework there is there is a there is a a, a call that uh, the constitution should be visited revisited so that a lot of all of these things can um, be if handled be if that will give us what we're looking for but a, a, a lot are change. against it hmm? why do you think a lot of people are against um, the constitution being touched eh? repub republished and polished you see it's one thing to amend or uh, reconstitute whatever mm -hmm. it's another thing for policy objectives that actually dovetails into solving immediate, intermediate, and long-term projects eh, to be rolled out by the people in leadership. So the critical leadership need to understand who we are as Nigerians, what brings out our energies and our tilt, and then devolve energies, devolve resources. Oh, there's nothing wrong in borrowing, but what do we borrow to fix? What do we borrow to do? And what kind of borrowing are we engaging in? And then when we announce project, it's one. It's another thing to divest the resources to the same projects. What are the monitoring mechanisms? What is the M and E of such projects? And then these are the days you have all kinds of incomplete of of projects, abandoned projects. A yes. government comes in, it slaughters mm. the predecessors of uh, programs yeah. and projects yeah no continuity Th that's, that's exactly what i'm saying all of those if, things if are going back in our economy if going back yes. to amending the constitution mm. will bring uh, a lasting solution to most of these challenges that we face they will do it why that's what i'm saying mm. the question is there are a lot of nigerians that are mm. against that why do you think that why why would people if we have discovered that the areas where we are having challenges, where we have issues, and now people are beginning to see out. that that losing out of what? Yeah. So you meaning that there are people that are benefiting from what's going on right now? Elizabeth, that has been the bane of economic development in Nigeria. Now, we have crude oil, which happens to be our no monocultural product. Why are we not refining? Why are all our refineries run a grant what about all the maintenance culture why are we selling crude to foreigners but even down the two refinery that has commenced is uh, you can see the imbroglio and all that demand is going through there because there are specific figures who don't want it to work why self personal aggrandizement i will forfeit my benefit and at the expense of, a a, of, of uh, thousands and of Nigerians, we need a governance that will be ready to step on toes. And you see, people behind this are not the, the proper, the poor people in the society who don't know their left from their right. They are the bourgeois. They are the sacred cows who have been milking this country dry. And you know what, Elizabeth? We have all that can go around. But the willpower, yes. the government decision to say, hey, it's time to do a little revolution. Not revolution in terms of protests or carrying arms. All those things won't work. But to shift emphasis and to mitigate the gap between the poor and the rich. I haven't mentioned the poor. Not that the poor will become poorer and mm. the rich will become richer. Right. I haven't mentioned Create the Create a baseline that yes. helps everybody be yeah. in a society. Mm. 
have we made mention of the protest? What do you think the post protest? What what um, do you think uh, it made the government were able to make anything good or they were able to feel the people like how they really felt about the do you think the the protest was able to pass the message it ought it was meant to pass to the government? I believe in the, the temporary. The message was hard. The government is awoken to the fact that the citizens are aware. But it should go beyond that. We should create forum, and I'm happy for the for the federal government creating a youth uh, forum. But the question I'm asking is: Are we going to allow this youth forum to create massive? solutions initiatives and contributions to supporting the effort of government to run appreciable what does the youth forum do and, and well what does it do great i would suggest that such if you look at nigerian demography the youth demography is the highest forms the highest quorum so what do we do let them use those forum those fora as an opportunity for positive engagement with government that's the youth the youth don't just set up leadership because oh you want to just make them talk or let them do their talk there let there be a cascade in fact there's a three phase cascade we are building for the youth forum for a proposal to say hey let's create an institutional framework that makes communication seamless simple easy so that there will be no need for protest okay everything will go through the cascade as it goes in so it comes out and then make it a cascade that it's development all right across okay. the border lines we are due for a break so just uh, we'll continue from that thoughts that line of thoughts that um yeah stay tuned viewers and uh, we are taking a short break now we'll be right back You're welcome back. Thanks for being there and for staying with us. Uh, still with me on the studio is Dr. James Komolafe. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes, Good to and be here um, again. we're on the line of thoughts of the youth. Yeah. So I would like you to just continue from where we stopped. The youth has the solution to whatever we are in right now. So they must be given their place. And you what think do the I youth mean? will do better? What do I mean by the youth giving their place? It's not necessarily calling them to say, you are SSA, you are this and you are that. No. Create an enabling environment that helps them to do self-actualization. I need to be able to devolve myself. Let there be light. Although God said that. <laughs> and, and there is light. And there was light. Right. And there is light. Mm. Government should provide light. Let there be power. Okay. So, so that we can invest in our skills, mm. in our competencies, mm. and see what we can lay our hand on. Did you, so that we can also invest in our minds. Did you at any point think mm. a couple of years back that, yes, this started gradually and it started deteriorating. Did you at any point feel we were going to get to this level? That's one. Then have you ever, as a, as a man, as a husband and a father, mm. the head of your family, yes. have you ever felt like you have food at home and um, you are not sure how long that that food the food stuff you have at home is, is going to last and like you kind of uh, find yourself under one some kind of pressure has it ever happened at any time yeah, even right now yeah yeah and that is the meaning of poverty where you have a nation and just to be the poverty capital of the world what does that tell you and the first poverty is the poverty of the mind when we cannot deploy the resources of our mind to creative thinking, solution finding, interventions and all of that, it's going to affect what we bring out. So there's poverty of the mind, there's poverty. And look at our schools, look at our education sector. Mm? 
It's not enough to go to school and have certificates and have the chains of degrees yeah. until you are able to convert those knowledge into practical working applications that solves problems and create a much needed intervention we've mm -hmm. not started. Education was our focus for last week and I tell you already even as schools have resumed this week it, so, uh, there, there are already I know a lot of parents that have not been able to send their children back to school because yeah, they because don't have the, the fee. And uh, the fact remains that you don't expect parents to, to do what they are not able to do. So okay, and it's, it's, it's very sad. It's actually, yeah, it's actually very sad mm. and uh, very painful for the the fee increment and and all that the, um, for this um, new um, session. Once the fuel right? increase, the fuel price, yes. pump price increases, yes. it's a nexus mm -hmm. around everywhere. It is. So that's why uh, you see uh, to just roll out policies without looking at the immediate, intermediate and long-term impact assessment and how the citizens will feel we should look at what we, we look I, I, need, at I need to get your take society or what? yes uh, i need to get your take on them the mm. a few days ago yes. the, uh, the nlc president mr joe, joe Ajero, was mm. um, arrested at the airport on his way to the uk to yes. attend the program by the dss and um, also the office of Serap um, was, was uh, invaded. invaded by the DSS. Mm. So what, what, and, and looking at the, the what um, Ajero was arrested for, mm. something that had to do with sponsorship of mm. terrorism, sponsoring terrorists, and all that. What's your take well, on this? What do, you think the, what do you think the government is up to by accusing a man that ha was there, mm. that fought? Is, is their interest of the Labour Congress is for the for the general for the Nigerian mm. workers, you know? So what is the what, how what is the relationship between him fighting for a a, a, a living wage for the Nigerian workers? What mm. what is the relationship with that with ter terrorism and sponsorship of terrorism? Right. I believe there are better ways to handle it. And the way and manner to which he was embarrassed at the airport and you arrested. You shouldn't carry out any function just to intimidate people. I consider it as a behavioral violation. You might say, oh, it's for state security and all of that, but it's not enough to know what to do. How you go about doing it is also very pivotal. And you see, you don't cause fear and panic on the society just because you want to get something done. There are better ways to doing it. And you see, the public is already very volatile. Tensed. Tensed now. There's hunger. There's anger. No job. The little money you have mm -hmm. cannot buy anything. And who betides anybody who keeps money in the bank now? To say I'm saving <laughs> before you know it, no, you no lose savings. the value of the money. <laughs> there's no such thing as savings. No savings. Have in Nigeria. No yeah. savings. Because so, uh, whatever it is you have there, we just lose value. With all this going on, you want to fuel a basic infuriated society by just pouncing on people and all that who are not just leaders on their own. They are representing critical masses. They all have their mandate. And mm -hmm. if you feel they have infringed over the constitution of the nation, invite them. Right. It is when they uh, escape uh, invitation or uh, evade it that you can now look for them and declare them wanted. When such is not done and you just harass people, stop their programs and projects except you have something behind the curtain for which you are not talking out so it's better in a civil society to get things done the right way the right manner at the right time and not to incite public peace and bring in some certain level of de de disruption there and so that's why they also came up to say if you take our man then we are going to make the nation Absolutely. to go elsewhere. Absolutely. And yeah. then, and so it, it, it was released. We, so why <laughs> must we do it this yes. way? Okay, so what about uh, the invasion? What, what it shouldn't uh, be. Give them an invitation. Let's come to a peace table. People say it is better to what? Georgia. Than to World War. Mm -hmm. Why must we infringe on what they are doing? 
you have any aspersion over some certain uncanny behavior, give them an invitation. Let it be that they did not show up or honor invitations after first, second appeal and all of that, but to just box into their office without prior notice and invitation. It's a... Uh, you are defaming them and beside that you are infringing on their rights absolutely how can i keep my office who just come mm. into it and started asking me questions do you think it's a way to put a, a, a kind of fear on other civil society groups so that um whether you believe it or not elizabeth that is what it is because we are all emotional beings and what is good for the goose people say it's good for the gander i like to also say what is bad for the goose is also bad for the gander so there are better ways of handling issues it's not by intimidation it's not by violence it's not by coercion mm. it's by correspondence keep a conversation just like we're having conversation right. here right life is all about conversation Absolutely. you cannot converse mm. then you go in divergent yeah, order and yeah. crisis will result okay so back to our conversation palliatives yeah do you think um, the government is actually going about it the right way the uh, some time ago um there was a minister of um, a better edu that uh, was meant to be the minister to coordinate all of these uh, palliatives uh, um, that were coming coming to the people and mm. all that and before we knew it we know what happened or should we, I say we know what happened to her she just disappeared uh, into the thin air after the accusation Both the design and the details so, are wrong exactly so <laughs> do you think that the government is going about it the right way so, so that the people that are really vulnerable the most uh, the poorest of the poor in the local you know, rural areas are getting these palliatives that it ought to get to do you know elizabeth that there are some ngos that also give out a lot quality, a lot a huge lot without Dango simple a, noise yes nobody died nobody was uh, mm. uh, was uh, killed because of a uh, mad rush to collecting rice and all of that yes i think government should return to its original function of creating policies and then creating an enabling environment that makes those policy yeah. work. Rationing policy, I was, that's where I was coming to. Because where that is not government preoccupation mm. and is to shift the emphasis to only giving palliatives, mm. even if the president has a good mind to doing it, he can go everywhere. He can't, he can't be everywhere it at the same time. It has to simmer down. Right. And then, what structure is on ground okay, to so handle what are those, some of these policies you think if the those structures are not strong enough and all inclusive mm. then mm. it becomes a biased thing mm. and palliatives instead of solving problems we end up creating more problems mm. absolutely and you see in fighting and all kinds of issues will come in because you now it will now become the issue of the survivor of the fittest. It is who already. Who do you know? Who knows, <laughs> who knows who? And all of that. That's those it. are the first right. set of people to be considered. You go out there even to functions and all of that. Mm. They start looking at faces and asking, who are you and all Which of that. Which political party do you belong to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they want like to that? know you by your name. Yes. All this oh. by God tree, mm. ethnic It's not meant to be political. That, yeah. will, will not help us in this nation. We must fix the Nigerian nation, fix the citizens, and then look at what we can do to revive this economy and create a basic framework that will make everybody be what the son of nobody can become somebody without knowing somebody yeah. or anybody, mm -hmm. as they say. That's how it ought yeah. to be. So when you should have the solution, you should be given the pivotal place to express yourself. Mm. Not that somebody will hijack it or to say, no, no, this cannot fly. I've created several initiatives for this country for which I fear corrupt in some places and organizations only to have it hijacked or just pushed aside because possibly I don't know people or I don't have the big guns <laughs> there who will just see it through. Let's developmental about, initiatives should be encouraged yes to call out to you absolutely. bring your ideas mm. create a think tank mm. and let's see my these things through and see which one will work now and engage the youth because you see 
the idle man's hands is the devil's workshop. It is always. So you are talking of Yahoo and all kinds of stuff. The youthful energy is so potent that must be expressed. Mm. Either through the good, the bad, or the ugly manner. So if you don't create the good template, they will sit down and that, that, their hands. That, yeah, that's why this even this um the issue of um mm. it gets attaining eighteen years before they go. To, you know, the child a, go, a child goes to the university. Mm. It's good if um government can support it by creating technical schools or uh, and um uh, centers for skill acquisition all right where so that they can stay yes, before they become 18. yes so that if they are 16 or 17 they finish up before they become 18 to go to the university well, that's then an archaic thing elizabeth to do uh, you see what i would suggest is this you are saying a child must f attain the physical age of 18. I think we should make it a, in a more broader sense. What? Age is not just about the physical number. Oh, he's 18. You could have a child who is 18 years and still reasoning like a 10 year old toddler. Oh, a lot. Child. A lot. Or a 7 year old child. And you could have a child who is 14 and is already reasoning and is uh, IQ and eq it's is so high, high it looking like 25 or mm. 30. Mm. so i think we should put all of these variables together to decide mm. not just the physical age and then no matter the age we are looking at and considering mm. because you might say oh when a child is not 18 he has not really been emotionally stable mm. emotional stability is not a function of physical calendrical age there are so many other variables you have to look at. You have to look at nature, nurture, culture. You have to look at the environment. You have to look at family background. Mm -hmm. You <laughs> can't expect the child of a professor yeah. who uh, right from womb has <laughs> gone through very good tutelage and what have you. And at uh, just hmm. the minimum age is already finished. Second I, I'm smiling school. because and of the word you, you, you used, emotional stability. Uh, I want us to talk a little bit. How stable, how stable emotionally do you think Nigerians are in the midst of all of this that is going on and happening? As far as our mental health is concerned. Emotional stability is not just a function of what happens out there. Mm. It's a function of what is going on in That's what I'm saying as far as our mental health is concerned. Mental health in Africa and Nigeria is no diving. And when people hear mental health, they tend to think it's something of the negative. Mm. Not knowing that every human no, the awareness is coming up. The awareness is gradually coming up, but mm. we need to face the fact and to build our mental strength, emotional strength, physical strength. How can we strength. do that? All right, with yeah. all of these happenings, you turn left, you turn right around us in Nigeria as Nigerians, as strong as we are as a people. How can we intentionally, as a people, balance our mental health this the driver seat of your own life elizabeth be the architect of your own life design your own life the way you want it to be because in the midst of the tickets of all darkness a little do, light can you design your life it. the way you want it to be in yes. hunger Le in now, lack? Let, now let me answer that question you see hunger is an event your response to hunger should agitate you to see what you can do to passionately dispense your, your own potential. That's how it ought to be. So when for, you see to that some people, it's the other way around. Hmm? To some people, that's how it ought to be. It's still a yes. mentality case. Absolutely. If your mind is just warped and you think the solution out there the situation out there must also be met by a solution out there you are wrong every human being elizabeth is wired and woven within to solve a particular problem on the outside so let's associate whatever you are going through as the dark uh, uh, the dark pit mm. so you are the light so what can you see what solution can you generate you need to be able to appreciate the situation on ground and the solution you have at hand for which you need strategy to meet them and you create the intervention 
Let's not think that government has all the facility to provide jobs for everybody. We must be people who deploy resources. So self-discovery is pivotal, mm -hmm. where you come to discover who you are. You know yourself too well, mentally, emotionally, physically, I agree. spiritually, and then you grow yourself. You can't serve your potential out in crude version. When you are crude, you cause injury. But develop yourself. Find out and fine tune who you are and what you have for skills, for competency. Iron, sharpness, uh, iron. It's uh, what about you if see, you grow up with the wrong people? Yeah. <laughs> I'm borrowing that from the scripture. Very good. You see? <laughs> what about if, if you grow up in a mist? Yes. Of, of 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 negative people it could even be your family your immediate family or uh, that's your just one out of 15 yeah, your parents, probably your 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 colleagues and yeah, um, you find yourself every human being has that v-shaped vacuum I what do i call v-shape value shape vacuum saying hey it's a high time you look for your values construct and create something meaningful to solve any problems rather than just talking and talking you see elizabeth we can sit here for the next 10 hours and just talking about all the gamut of problems this nation has brought us but the question is can we turn the searchlight inward mm. to see what we carry that can power and regenerate if i may borrow that term regenerate our country the solution to Africa is in Africa. Right. The solution to Nigeria is, is in, in, is in yeah, Nigerians. Is in but we yeah. need a facility that will bring Nigerians together to say, hey, we are ready. Let's hit the ground running right. and solve our problems right. our own way. Absolutely. Then so, before we look at imported technology it. and yeah. see how we can adapt, not adopt, adapt to our variables on ground. Not until we begin to see a governance that give, uh, uh, gives emphasis to this, we'll be going around the vicious circle, yeah. just doing the talk and borrowing more money to do palliatives. Yes, as we, as we <laughs> wind down gradually, hmm. what would you, what are the possible solutions, you know, you think the government can use to begin to solve these issues of... Um, Mm. lack hunger food insecurity a, palliative issues and all that a policy framework for social cultural development that's cascade into the awakening of the various geopolitical zones of nigeria where everybody can be happy to belong to a nation that works a nation that works i like this meaning you are going to enable us to find a society where we can discover ourselves mm. through learning education that is affordable through the rates of numeracy ratio and as we do that let's build our skills and invest in technology the ict digital economy and then deploy our services if the government can create a framework where people will no longer graduate to look for employment mm. but they graduate to do deployment then we are solving our problems our own way whatever you know to do and fix through your skills your competencies and your technical know-how can create value that you can even export to other nations when you do yours i do mine then we find harmony in variety and in so doing a cultural framework that will bind us together will be hitting the ground running from there government can look at the organized private sector and the middle uh, the middle economy and say hey is that the direction you want to go now let's create policies that will help you yeah. become it yeah. and then we we'll leverage that for national yeah. development but for, for do, real, that, do you think the government seriously do not know all of this that this is the way to go and this is what how they should go about solving all of this the challenges? knowledge you have that does not make the people free it's not real knowledge it's fake so you know it then Let's set the variables in place to keep it working. 
it can work. Nigeria can work. I believe in Nigeria. I will have relocated a long time ago, but I believe God didn't make we mistake cannot all in, make, in making me <laughs> a Nigerian. So I'm here to solve problems. So the emphasis now in closing is to have a national framework that rework the psyche of every Nigeria to become solution providers, interventionists in our various corners and levels yeah. so that we can to solve work, problems. To work the psyche of every Nigerian. Very that is why you see that a lot of Nigerians are running, trooping out of Nigeria, not because they know where they are going, not because they, they, they are sure you can't that where be, they are going will be better off you than You can't be a lizard in Nigeria, yeah. only to go to America or Canada to mm. become a crocodile. Right. No. They are only traveling now maybe for better even the ones that have been there that, that have made it there want to come back to nigeria to invest it's not but rosy everywhere need, yeah they need a structure so they need the, a, a, a the good structure to come back to you must bounce back to yourself even when you have the education the education must provide intervention that is why there is an amalgam now which we are running through schools and school stakeholder called eduvention it's a template that will tell us your behavior, your brand, your belief system, in fact and figure, and show you what potential you carry to create production, given your personality. Those three P's will bring out your qualities, your lifestyle, and then you can have a new sense of focus. You now know where to devolve energy and create production. Yeah. From there yeah, you what, earn a leaf. I'd like to know what you think about um, the National Youth Service Corp, the NYSC presently in Nigeria. It should not be faced out, but repackaged. How? To fix the social how do you? How, how should it be repackaged? Good. Look at what obtains now and create a reform in such a way that the copper will benefit from it, the state, the nation will benefit from it, and then the society will benefit from it. There are some, some things you have to now do online. And there are some you have to do on-site, and there are some you have to do off-site. So are you incorporating one? Meaning they do, not, they do not necessarily physically have to be sent? Is that what you are trying to say? There are places you can send. For example, you can send a core member to some belligerent states and all of that to just say, go and die freely. No. So we need to look at, you see, in strategy and strategic thinking, you don't just say oh, it has been a culture, let's just mm. keep on without looking at what obtains on ground. You. Thank you so so we need to understudy what the situation it's is on ground place to draw the and then have a solution Kapoor at Malafe. hand with which to solve problems. Thank you. Very Thank vital. you so much. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Dr. James Komolafe, for mm. coming to the conversation today. We thank are very, very grateful. Much, and we know that uh, when next we call on you, you will be here. Definitely. And I would like to thank you, our viewers, for staying tuned today. Just like um, we have said on the conversation, we hope that uh, you will, as Nigerians, we are strong people, strong nation, intentionally, you know, be able to, like, um, strengthen yourself and be able to go find ourselves going, you know, round <laughs> around the situation the circumstances and they remain strong thank you so very much and um from all of us here in um kaftan from kaftan television in abuja my name is elizabeth samsedi we'll see you next time bye